In a world that never seems to shut the hell up, silence has become quite a popular trope over recent years, especially in the realm of horror. Where some succeeded, and others failed, none picked up on its potential beauty quite like Three Iron did. On the surface, Three Iron tells a simple story. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy finds his way back to girl, a changed man, for the better. The end. But when I tell you Three Iron is a silent movie in many regards, part ghost story in some places, and fairy tale in others, a fable about the link between this world and the next, blending magical realism with the metaphysical and then supernatural, to tell a tender, ghostly love story about transcendence, it'll likely sound a little confusing. And I haven't even mentioned the golf club to which the movie owes its name yet. If the writing adage of show don't tell was ever depicted in a moving picture, Kim Ki-duk's Three Iron would be it. Alluding to its silence, however, feels like a disservice to the film, since this detail, important and poignant as it is, only really tells part of the story. If you wanted to, scene after scene could be clipped up and analysed for its metaphorical elements, deeper themes, foreshadowing and ambiguity, leaving one eternally intrigued as to its direction, where the silence says more than words ever could, keeping our focus glued to the couple on screen as they enter into a tender, entirely reciprocal and beautiful relationship, with the unspoken agreement to simply shut the fuck up and be with one another because they want to be, and nothing more. They're two broken people, healing one another not by talking things out, but by taking action related to one another's care, nurture, and well-being. My only gripes with the film came from its title, An Epitaph at the End. Regarding the latter, not only is it cringe-inducing, but more irksomely, it was simply superfluous. It's hard to tell whether the world we live in is either a reality or a dream. Well, no shit. Though shoehorned in for I guess understandable reasons, it stuck out like a sudden foghorn blast followed by a round of wet farts at a funeral, as if ironically screaming its underlying themes at the top of its lungs just in case you were too stupid to get it. Considering the mental handicap of the average Ji Hong Jo, Perhaps this was a necessity, but given how mysterious and mystical the movie, there was no need for Three Iron to essentially drool and shit all over itself like that. Like its title, which hints at the class divide between the characters through the symbolism of a golf club, driving at both the ostracised loneliness of our lovers and powerful status of the abusive husband, when one considers the reach of the film, it's a wonder why these elements weren't simply cut or changed around. For instance, if there was a better one-line quip, love is a wordless poem would have suited it a whole lot more. In epitaph and in title, if you'll indulge this lowly reprobate's needless opinion. But even then, the film should have stuck to the guns it had told the story with for its whole runtime and simply kept its mouth shut. Though not a spoken line, it's hard to tell whether the world we live in is either a reality or a dream, still fucking reads like one. According to Happy Gilmore, the Three Iron is the most needless of a golfer's clubs, rarely used and ergo ignored, similarly to our protagonists, and the Three itself lends itself nicely to the misleading menage depicted on the poster, but whether these elements do much for the film is largely debatable. For me, they were a bit of a double bogey. Son of a bitch, Paul, why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Suck my white ass ball! <laughs> Overall, it's certainly not at the expense of the movie. Just a tad confusing for a story with so much ambition to settle on a title so par for the course. Fuck shit! Fuck me in a fucking ass! Fuck you, you fucking stupid cunt! Shitty golf related maxims aside, the film truly is, ahem, a hole in fucking one. 
I challenge anyone to watch it and not willingly allow it to let it haunt them, where it'll live rent-free in your head much longer than its leading man, without ever outstaying its welcome. Slicing these peccadilloes and the odd dip in pace into the bunker, Three Iron is a love story that transcends not only its theme, but even the cinematic experience, essentially twisting its vision for a beautifully surprising and poignantly conveyed third act, just before the silent couple's day-to-day -day antics begin to get a little too repetitive. It's the sign of a skilled director and storyteller to know when a premise has done its job, and we can move on in the knowledge we're in safe hands. Some may be aggrieved by where the movie jumps, abandoning its thriller-begun story into that of the fantasy realm, but for those who allow it to take you on its journey, it'll be remembered as if it was a dream you once had yourself that somehow came to life. Without saying too much more, here's the premise. Three Iron tells the tale of a lonely drifter, presumably a vagabond with only a motorcycle to his name, who spends his days pinning restaurant flies to the doorknobs of likewise isolated abodes. For this lonesome wanderer, however, the job comes with an additional benefit. After a day or so, if the flyer still hangs on the door or dangles from its letterbox, our vagrant assumes its vacancy and breaks in for a couple of nights' stay. Rather than behave like a rock star of old and trashing his impromptu hotel rooms, however, our charming bum is the quintessential house guest. As if a forgotten family member, he waters the plants and fixes forgotten items like clocks or radios as a gesture of gratitude to the people who live there, despite him invading their homes with them none the wiser. Naturally, it's not long before the surprisingly gentle scallywag happens to break into a home that is not as empty as it seems. Though when an abused, isolated housewife notices his presence, instead of alerting the authorities or even making so much as a sound, she observes him as he goes about his business, enthralled and beguiled, akin to a phantom herself, deciding only to intrude upon his person and awareness when she catches him fapping over her photograph. And just to leave you with the bluest of balls, that's all I'm gonna say.